Brain Squalls is intended for creative adults. It may not be suitable for all audiences. Better come on in. There's a story brewing. Welcome to Brain Squalls, where every week we help you flex those creative muscles as we turn prompts into stories. I'm Matt Day, and this is Evie Knight. Hello. Welcome. Here we are. Episode two. I know. We, 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 we did it. We got one down. We do. Yeah. We were lucky enough to get uh, Mike Arnson to send us a uh, prompt cue out of his book. Yeah. And which, which was great. Yeah. And fun. I mean lucky, because he did not I, send a real easy one, and I think we came up with something kind of fun. No, that one was a tough one for a start, but yeah, so I thought today um, it would be my turn to bring a prompt. All right. And I'm really going out on a limb on this one, because I thought it might be fun to try something that really isn't meant to be a prompt or meant for writers in, at all. Okay. Okay? So, I'm going to get it. All right. Okay. We're using this game. It's called Stupid Deaths, the Frightfully Funny Game. All right. And what I understand of it is that... Yeah, which we've never played at home. No, we we haven't. I bought it because I'm like, how can you... How can, how can you, you be a horror buy? writer and not own Stupid Deaths? Exactly. Yeah. But from what I understand of it, in these cards um, are deaths... Wow, definitely true. We've never played at home. They're <laughs> right? still wrapped. It's all the brand cards new. So, so this is, we're playing it a whole different way today. Right. Some of them are actual real deaths, like real deaths that occurred in, in stupid ways. Okay. And some of them are just fake. Like the up. Darwin Award winner types? The Darwin Awards, right. And yeah. then some are, uh, are fake. They did, they made up for the game. Okay. And apparently the goal is to, to be able to determine which ones were real and which ones weren't. But I thought yeah. what we could do is pick a card and go with whatever death it is, whether it's fiction or not, because who cares? We're writing fiction, right? Yep. And I was thinking we write a mystery today and however this person died, we have to come up with how that could have been made into a murder and and we have to write a mystery. Wow. There's a lot going on. You think we can get this done in an hour? No, not at all. All right. Good. But I think <laughs> oh, but I, I think full responsibility yeah. for this. Whatever happens, this is, it's your fault. It, absolutely it's my fault and i will be the prompt master next time so it'll be my fault next time right definitely so what uh, um so in preparation for like i don't know obviously ahead right. what what it, we're gonna have but in preparation of, of planning using this for writing a mystery i i did plan a little ahead okay okay so first i'm gonna just put this deck here Okay. I'm going to let you you pick. Okay? I'll cut so the cards. So technically it will also be sort of your fault. No, no, no. But yeah, no, we're in this together. It's <laughs> I mean, our... we're in it together, <laughs> but it's still your fault. Okay, whatever. Okay, so what I did was I remembered a class from, from my master's program mm -hmm. um, by Victoria Thompson. Victoria Thompson writes killer mysteries all right um you can find her on amazon she does a whole one called the gaslight mystery series and a, a ton of other ones too um so she's super awesome and i took a class on writing mysteries because i write horror and i didn't i, I don't write mystery but it's good to know how to do those things in case i ever want to branch out so i i have notes from her class that i took and um in in thinking ahead knowing that mysteries are often complex i brought a whiteboard for okay. us to keep track of some stuff too okay okay so do you think should we pick out our death first or do you want me to give you a couple rules of a mystery all right let's hear the rules okay yeah and then we'll get to the stupid death all right so mystery rules of fair play um and this actually came from hillary was i, I might not be pronouncing it right w-a-u-g-h essay called The Mystery Versus the Novel. It was written in 1976. Okay. All right. Number one, all clues discovered by the detective must be made available to the reader. Okay. Number two, early introduction of the murderer. Mm -hmm. Number three, the crime must be significant. Um, ours will be clearly yep. murder. Um, number four, there must be detection. Yeah. Clearly. Um, It'd be a really, four. really short, boring would story. Be so boring. It's like, oh, I just watched did. you kill somebody. <laughs> number five: the number of suspects must be known, and the murderer must be among them. Okay. Okay. 
And, you know, that whole one of us in this room yeah. is the killer. But you can't just do the switcheroo where you're chasing down nine obvious suspects. And right. at the end, you're like, oh, you know, I didn't know who it was. We haven't is introduced this character the yet. Janitor. Yeah. And number six, um, nothing extraneous may be introduced. So, you, I mean. So everything has to be relevant. I mean. I think you can put red herrings in, but mm-hmm. they can't be so ridiculous red herrings that. I don't know what like that they have one. to be material to the story, but not the mystery. Maybe, maybe, yeah. You can't just like put weird stuff in. I guess I don't know. All right. Um, and I think what we need to be thinking about is when we're we're making up our our suspects is um, their motive mm-hmm. because they all have to be reasonable suspects, right? So right. motive, opportunity, and they should all have some kind of guilty secret that yeah. they want to so hide. I'm right? not a big mystery reader, but I do immediately think of the movie Clue. Right. So right. that one is just heavy handed, but it's all there. Right. Everything you just said is in that movie. Right. There. So perfect. Including the word red herring like nine times. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, mm-hmm. do you know where that term came from? I don't. I mean, I know what it means because of the nice contextual definition that the movie gave me, but I don't know why. So why say we it. use it, yeah. why we say it. So red herring means smoked herring mm-hmm. um, historically. So, um, even way back in the day when they were doing like fox hunts and stuff, there were people, you know, against the cruelty, you know, it's mean yeah. to, to hunt the foxes for fun. Um, so what they would do is take bags of smoked herring out the night before um, along the proposed trail of the hunt. Mm-hmm. And they would make fake trails with the smoked fish so the dogs would get um, distracted and not catch the fox. So it really is... Wow. So they would never solve the mystery of where the fox is because they were busy chasing the red Red herring. herring. Well, yeah, that seems really on the nose. Right. So that's your piece of education for the day. And I say it's time to pick a card. All right. So you want me to. Yeah. Pick a card, man. All right. Cut the deck. Pick a card. Make a good one. Is it the one at the bottom or that one? It's It's, your pick. Okay. That's the one. Okay. All right. right. Do you want to read it? You want me to read it? Uh, I want to. Okay. Because if it's really ludicrous, I want to try not to laugh. <laughs> okay. All right. It says, Red Eldridge, birth date unknown, died 1916. A circus hired Eldridge as an elephant trainer despite having no experience or expertise. While riding an elephant, he prodded the animal, poking a badly infected tooth. The elephant reacted as anyone with an exposed nerve would. She pulled him off her back with her trunk and threw him to the ground, killing him instantly. Okay, well, I feel like we know. <laughs> uh, so, we're going to have to back some of that wow. information off to turn it into a mystery. Yeah. How? Like we come across Why Red Eldridge laying on the floor of the victim. This is your fault. <laughs> you said you wanted okay. to and we're doing it. We're doing it. Okay. So I'm thinking, yeah, we I'm have gonna... to back some of those facts off. Red Eldridge is just found dead. At the circus. I love this circus setting, yeah. first of all. I love it. Found so. dead at the circus and trampled. And I mean, the elephant is the murderer. Okay. So good old Red. Yeah. Red is our... Our victim. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do this so that we can, everybody can see, but. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So red is our victim. Yep. Let's make red. How old? Let's make him. Well, let's see. He's got no experience or expertise. Uh, He probably just got fired from his last job and he said, I'm going to join the circus. So let's call him 44. Oof. Okay. Were you thinking younger or older? Yeah. I was like, no experience or anything. That's got to be a millennial. (laughs) <laughs> oh, this is a contemporary story <laughs> no, to me. I'm kidding. I mean, it's it said, totally nice. I, yeah. I, I agree. I was, it was a total joke. I love millennials. They're my kids. <laughs> okay. So we've got Red found dead at the circus. Mm-hmm. And are we, we talking do. like Dust Bowl era? I know. When did he die? 1919. So, yeah. Wait, that's a six, I think, there. Let me see. 1916 he yeah, died Wow. okay so that's heading into the roaring 20s yeah um his job was elephant trainer yep his <laughs> short career okay so i say what'd she do she stomped him threw him off his back or oh she, yeah, threw, she him. threw him so off her so back. okay so we no one you know Threw him to the ground, killing him instantly. So, yeah, just took the trunk, whacked mm-hmm. him to the ground. Mm-hmm. Well, 
let's say that everybody, I mean, I guess the question is, with this death, are we going with the elephant? <laughs> I mean, it is. I, but that gives but us a no lot one of room to play this. with this mystery. You know, we can have suspects. Right. Red could have been. What was her name again? Did it say? Oh, it didn't say. Didn't well, so. she needs a name. Yeah. And I guess I'm just assuming it's a she. Yeah. Does it say? I'm just saying. You're just you assuming know. her gender? Yeah. I mean, there's no female out there that's going to let a man crawl up on her who doesn't have a clue what he's doing and start poking and prodding and she's not going to try to throw him back off. So I feel like it's... All right. <laughs> All right. I'll buy into that. All right. So the... Okay. So we, we need our suspects and... I'm going back to my notes that I've prepared education. ahead of times. I hope this doesn't take away from the spontaneity, but I'm not a mystery writer. I'm trying to do right by the genre. Mm, yep. Um, so Victoria Thompson recommends starting with at least four suspects, but yep. no more than seven because okay. more than that. Well, so, I think if we can pull off four, we're doing right. fine. I agree. Let's, this is, we don't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, although I, I just want to point out that one of my favorite, um, mysteries was the agatha christie and then there were none right is that what it's called i don't know i don't remember the name of it oh my god but it was a fav famous favorite one and there were 10 mm -hmm. but that's agatha christie so she's probably like the stephen king of the mystery, mystery world, world yeah i would think right i would think so let's just <laughs> let's not make our goals so lofty today let's go four suspects yeah okay so clearly the elephant whose name is what now what are we gonna call I don't her know. What should we, we should give her, her a name Bessie. Bessie? Yeah. All right. Bessie. All right. So Bessie the elephant mm -hmm. is a suspect because they have crushing strength and right. she was known to be there and he was an elephant trainer. Okay. So she definitely has a motive. Yep. She had the means. Yep. And, but I guess here's the question. Let's, let's make for Bessie. Does she, did she have the opportunity? Well, of course she did. She did it. But opportunity I mean, we know without now. anyone else seeing. Well, yeah, he's the elephant trainer. It's, Fine, it's his whatever. job to be alone then, with the you elephant. You know what? I feel like this story is already over. Why? How are we going to keep people from assuming it was Bessie? I have a couple of really good okay, ideas. Okay, well, It's right. 1916. Okay. Organized crime is in its heyday. Okay. Uh, oh, you're bringing an outsider to what? the circus. Yeah, the new guy. Red, the victim, oh. is the outsider. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so he's got a he's whole past from the life mob. behind him. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Okay. Also, I mean, it could be the mob. It could be an ex-wife. It could be an ex-father-in-law or an ex-brother-in-law or both of those two. Yeah. Like, he's a guy nobody really knows and he right. turns up dead. All right. Well, you, who's the other suspect then? Okay. Well, I don't well, necessarily want to go straight to organized crime. I want to go with ex-father-in-law, ex-brother-in-law type of thing, you know. Okay. Or current. Ooh father-in-law brother-in-law he's still married but he left oh, okay and she's pregnant oh god or just had the baby okay um and we're like not too far out of like sidearm so, territory here i mean i know 1916 was starting to get a little bit more civilized but you know let's say it's set in the west a little bit so red left joined the circus yep leaving his wife an Pregnant. unborn, at the time, unborn child. Pregnant. And uh, broke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he was supposed to be the breadwinner, but he kept getting fired from everything. Okay. So how has the father-in-law found him? Mm, well, the circus was in town when he disappeared, and Red finds himself to be clever, but he's not. So all he had to do was follow the circus when he didn't see him in town. <clears throat> okay. Well, a little bit. What's the father-in-law's name? Hmm. Let's see. How about, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something ridiculous, but not too ridiculous. How about just Jeb? Oh, Jeb. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm a, you got this. So. Yep. All right. I'm not questioning. I just feel like him following the circus seems so easy. Like. Well, it doesn't have to be a first step when we're writing it backwards. Yeah. You know, we already know killed somebody, so we can make it more I'm convoluted so if we want to. sorry to you who are listening because you already know the killer. That's okay, though. 
No, because you know what? You are writing it with us. And, and I hope you're doing a better job. Yeah, this podcast is about craft. I mean, yeah, we yeah. want to come up with a good story, but this is about how we did it. Right. So right. It's, it's like a meta mystery. This is a good one that we might ultimately have to pull out some extra help because, man, I'm I'm not feeling this one. Well. I, I mean, I love it. I love it. Don't get me wrong. Well, I think we're you doing fine here. You put a circus here. and I'm happy, but I, I don't know. I'm struggling with writing a mystery. Okay. Okay. So. so all right. Next soon as, as soon as Red got to the circus, he started messing with whom or flirting with whom? Well, it's one of the trapeze girls. Okay, one of the trapeze no, girls. Wait, that's too cliche. One of the, maybe a female clown. All right. You know, this turn of the 20th century, were there female clowns? Oh, you're right. Maybe she's a female clown, but nobody knows it. Maybe she's the... Maybe nobody knows she's a girl. One of those, what, are the, what were the topless dancers called back then? I don't know. Burlesque? Yeah. No, no, no. There was a... I don't know. I can't remember. Somebody at home remembers. Well, anyway. Anyways. If you okay, remember so, that, let us know because okay, oh. we're about to go buy it. But anyway, uh, what I was getting at is that female character mm-hmm. uh, is the love interest of the strong man. Okay. S- so the strong man strong is man the suspect. Is the next suspect. Yeah. Strong man. Yeah. And of course, he goes by Hercules. Of course he does. Yeah. Hercules. And he is legit strong. He's tall. He's big. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Red messing with his girl. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Good thing I'm glad I you're this in charge of the whiteboard and eraser. Right. Because look at my writing. It's yeah. It's so good. So now we have one more suspect to put together. Uh-huh. All right. I did those two. Okay. And then you did the murderer. So who's the last suspect? All right, let me let me think on this one for a second. All right, but not too long. Dead I'm air not, is so boring. I know, right? But I want this to be like. I think it should be. Who killed the dead guy? Excellent mystery title. Who killed the dead guy? The ex elephant trainer. Ooh. The guy he replaced. Intrigue. All right. So former elephant trainer who left his job unceremoniously or was dismissed from his he job. He was dismissed because he refused to push the elephants more than he was comfortable. Like he actually was like, no, no, I'm not putting that elephant so up he, on that ball. He like, cared about the animals. It. He did. He didn't want to just beat them until they did stuff. He wanted to coach them into doing stuff, like coax them into doing it, not just right. beat and, them up. And and he didn't ever want to do things that he felt would put them in jeopardy, whereas the the circus owner doesn't care. He yeah, just he's wants like, no, no, we're going to do show, an elephant show. on a high wire. Yeah. No one's ever done that before. Yeah. We're going to do it. Yeah, nobody, yeah. And it doesn't occur to me that no one's ever done it before because it won't work. <laughs> right? But see, Red... Red's like, I don't I'll care. I'll do it. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Yeah. What's it pay? Right? Nickel a week? Yeah. Hand it over. Do I get half a loaf of bread on Wednesdays? Also, I'm going to say, oh, I hope I'm not messing up my table with this thing. Well, we'll worry about that later. <laughs> okay. Maybe stop dragging it across the <laughs> table and you won't mess it up so much. <laughs> okay. Uh, I feel like also... Perhaps the elephant trainer either one knows the elephant has a bad tooth. Yep. And was trying to get him some help or, or her some help or two. He knows sort of how to like cause something like give her something like popcorn, you know, and popcorn gets stuck. In oh, like he's intentionally exacerbating the bad tooth. Right. That doesn't make sense. He cares about no, the animals. He he's not that guy. Oh, no, you're right. Yeah. Okay. He wouldn't do such a thing. Okay, fine. But I'm just saying, maybe he instigates the elephant to kill Red. You know what I mean? Like he worsens. That's his way of killing. So you're trying to come up with like a secondary murderer. Secondary murderer, maybe, so that the elephant. Yeah. Okay, fine. The elephant. So the elephant did the job, but it's actually innocent. It was more of a tool of the murder, not the actual murderer. The elephant is the weapon. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I like the cleanliness of the elephant being the murderer. Fine, fine, fine. It's kind of fun because but everybody else is a legit suspect. Yeah, that's true. Do we add one more? I think that we or had enough of good. a struggle getting the four. And if that's within the rules, then let's fine, move on. Fine. Let's move on. All right. 
Um, this is your mystery class. What do we do next? Oh my god! This so is we already really have, a setting, of a we circus, have a setting of a circus, and we have so characters now. So clearly, this is between acts. Yep. Right. Everybody's doing their training and whatever, and I guess wherever the elephant training yeah. occurs. Yeah. I was assuming it'd be like after the last show, like they're tearing down or they're on the road or something like that. You know. Okay. So you think maybe tearing down, not on the road yet? Yeah. They're because we need down. to bring father-in-law like jeb's not going to find him on the road he's going to find him after right, the show right yeah okay so the show is done yep and um what was he doing he was riding the elephant poking it prodding it yeah let's see here uh while riding the elephant he prodded it poking a badly infected tooth okay so so he first of all you're not supposed to prod him in the mouth but he's an idiot right, he doesn't know about it really doesn't, doesn't know about elephant training <laughs> prod Okay, uh, so I say it's the end. They just did their show, mm-hmm. and you know, Red comes in riding the elephant like yep. as part of the show, whatever he's doing. And now it's the end, and he's trying to get the elephant back out towards its its like rail car, rail car, yeah, so they can move on because yep. it's done. As soon as the audience is out, they're going to start tearing down. Yep. Um, Jeb is lingering. Yep. Strong man, as far as anyone knows, has gone back to his trailer. Right? What, yeah, Tent, I don't mean, but they have rail cars too. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? His, so he, his he's, dwelling. He's gone back to his dwelling, and the ex elephant trainer. See, he'd have to be lurking, but people would recognize him. That's where true. Jeb has the power to blend in. Right. So now. Who finds him? Um, the girl, the strong man's woman. The female clown, is that what we decided she is? Well, you said you didn't know if there were female clowns back then. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not researching on the fly. So okay, fine. We can make so her a female saying, clown. Okay, fine. She's a female clown. Mm-hmm. What's her name? Sally Jesse. Okay. <laughs> Sally Jesse. The female clown. Yeah. Yeah. Sally Jesse is a female. No, <laughs> I don't mean that. Okay. Has But it's a fun name. Okay. Um so she had just she was done and she had just gone to Hercules's trailer. Yeah, she was hanging out with him because that's what she does. Well, here's the thing. She went to his trailer to hang out with him because that's what she does. Uh And he isn't there. Oh. Right? Gotcha. And she knows. Yeah. She knows. She knows he knows. She knows he knows. And so she's like, oh my God. So she runs back to the tent Mm -hmm. thinking, oh crap. Yeah. You know, what's going to happen? She runs back to the tent and finds Red dead. And the elephant is just sort of pacing about this tent. Yeah. Making some noise. Making some noise. Because its tooth still it's hurts. It's mad. Yeah. Um, of course, anybody might mistake that for the elephant being upset because the trainer's dead. Right. Some kerfuffle just happened mm-hmm. in its presence and, right. he's not, and it's not happy. So she screams and everybody comes running. Yeah. So who gets there first when she screams? Strongman recognizes her scream. Okay. I but, mean, but Jeb gets there first. All right. Jeb gets there first because, you know, he was just in the audience. He's just an yeah. audience member, but he was one of the last to leave. True. And he's keyed and he in hears, on red. He hears a scream. Mm-hmm. Well, this is what he's telling everybody. He yeah. hears a scream because right now our reader doesn't know. Right. So he hears a scream, he says, and he comes back in. So he makes it there first. Yep. And. Oh my God, what happened? He's like, well, who, who do you, who, you know, what, let me help you. Who do you need? You know? Yeah. And, and so he runs out and starts looking and on his way out, the other, like across the tent on the other side, he's running out, mm-hmm. right? Not in the same door he came in and guess who he runs directly into? Strong Hercules. Man. Yeah. So Hercules is there. Hercules is there and Hercules is holding his arm. Okay. You know, like Yeah, like he's sore. Like he's sore, something happened, he just hurt it somehow. Yeah. And he's kind of like leaning against one of the 
poles, I think. Mm -hmm. There must be some poles there. He's leaning. So he's leaning. He's not, you know, and uh, he like, is what's going on? What's going on? And and this Jeb guy's like, a man is dead. So Hercules. A man who I do not know. Right. (laughs) Some man is dead. Mm -hmm. And um, so he, he, Hercules runs in and finds this, the scene. Yeah. Jeb is running around Mm -hmm. the circus, like. Announcing it to everyone. Announcing it to everybody. Where's this ex-elephant trainer? He's got to be close by. He's too. lurking because he's worried. You know, he 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 cares about. Um, yeah. Maybe when everybody else gets there from the circus, right? Yep. Who happens to be in there now, calming the elephant? Oh, uh, yeah. Right. The ex elephant. The elephant trainer. is going kind of wild still yeah. from yeah. whatever happened. Right. Which nobody knows, but right. someone's dead. Hank. So Hank is calming the elephant. Yeah, and they're like, "Where did what? Where, where did, did you, you come, come from, from, Hank?" You don't belong here right. anymore. And he's like, listen, you know, I was just coming back to catch you guys before you left to say, I'd like my job back. I'm worried about I'm Bessie. I'm worried about her. But she wasn't acting right when it. I left. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just want my job back. I'm willing to work. I'm willing to do what you want me to do. I'll, I'll try it. But yeah. I just came back and I, I was walking in and I heard Bessie. All of a sudden, he's got an accent. Well, you don't know where he's from. <laughs> Hank. Hank. It sounds like he should have an accent. And uh, he's just worried about Bessie, mm-hmm. you know? And uh, so he's he's calming her down, you know, yeah. giving her a little, like, stroking across the trunk. Is yeah. that where you stroke an elephant to calm? I don't know. Sure. Um, and, and, and uh, okay, now everybody's there. So all in, Hank's a good guy. The circus people don't like him because he won't do the job they want and it's costing them money. Right. But he's a good guy. Yeah. Hank is a good guy. But, but of course they all are like, well, how convenient of you to be here. And the guy that replaced you is now dead. And you want your job back. Right. Yeah. Right. And the strong man is like, you know, he, he really can't help himself. Like good riddance, man. Yeah. Yeah. He's happy. He just he's shrugging just his like, shoulders like, well, you well, know, that's circus you is a dangerous business. Yeah. Elephants yeah, shouldn't can have be. been here. Yeah. And she's like, how could you, Hercules? This is a man. He's dead. How could you? And uh, so she's starting to think, you you did something to you him. You did this. You hurt him. No, I did not. Because <laughs> I'm raw. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but he's hurt. She's like, how'd you hurt yourself? You were fine during the show slept on some raw eggs yeah. <laughs> stop <laughs> trying to bring raw into everything you started i did um yeah so everybody's looking at hercules now like what yeah what what's going on here yeah, How what, did you, yeah, yeah. they didn't know you it was were like, fine it was kind during of the a three-way show. secret yeah you were fine at the show so she is now so upset and she's like you heard him because you know just because i kissed him one time wow she's from blah, the south blah, blah. too Listen, that's, Sally, that's the only Hank. accent that I can do. <laughs> so let me have it. All right. Um, you just saw us kissing. Everybody else now knows, right? Yeah. So now everybody is like not thinking maybe, maybe he's trauma. Yo. And so the circus, the hey, ringleader. So, so Hercules is just standing there with a hurt arm, aloof. And right. And everybody now knows that she had been smooching on red. Right. And... Meanwhile, Hank's just sort of innocently trying to take care of the elephant, uh-huh. but the guy who replaced him is dead. Uh-huh. And, and all right. So this is ri- starting to sound like a mystery. Right? So the ringleader is is now sort of like... Ringmaster? Is that what it's called? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the ringmaster slash owner of the circus yeah. or whatever, right? Mr. Red Jacket. Red Jacket, yeah. Um, he is has kind of like dismissed Hank for a minute because... Hanks over it. and yep. so he's like, "What is this? What what's going on here?" Yeah. Um. And and so you know, Sally Jesse spills the beans, right? Yeah. And so everybody's like, "What happened to your arm?" Mm-hmm. And so now they're all questioning, "What happened yeah. to your I arm?" I still want to know, right? Because you brought up I that brought his arm hurt, but how did he hurt right. himself? I know, I know. Conveniently at this time, <laughs> right? You know, I'm not too mad. Like, you were pretty dubious about our ability to do this, and we're 
a half hour in now and we've got a good story shaping up right yeah um so yeah i i'm not how did he hurt his arm okay do you know how he hurt his arm no i'll tell you i'm gonna tell you how he hurt his arm okay when okay so we know right we know when bessie went a little nutty yeah and killed him yeah she 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 was hurt right mm-hmm. He's so she kind of was running around and and strong man was just kind of putting his stuff like getting his stuff ready and getting it to out and she bumped into a pole and it pulled one of the big ropes out mm-hmm. and the strong man was like well shit holy crap not at all all of the guests aren't out yeah so he out of just like reaches over grabs the rope from sheer strong man nobility strong man nobility and he he pulls his arm out and he like just captain america rescues the tent Look, i like it by the way one I'm not and then he was able to get the other arm over and pull yeah. it back down and get the stake back in because yeah. he's a strong man he, yeah he's a strong it's man he, yeah he's right? legit strong right one would assume he could inflict the damage of the elephant right so yeah he's right strong. but guess what everybody else is as dubious as you yeah of like oh just out of the sure kind of you did that you did that yeah and he's like he's no i'm really, a real strong man. he's not really a nice guy no he's but not. he knew he could show off there were people still in the tent he's like check right. me out <laughs> oh i got the rope yeah, I'm gonna put, oh, yeah because back. you know what I'm there so were strong. some really cute girls walking out at that time yeah you know? and, and they mad saw it they're like sally oh, jesse he's so mad and Thank so he's showing up he's a strong man and he needs that ego stroke all the time yeah okay all right so so he legit hurt his is and everybody's like yeah right whatever Meanwhile, Jeb's still kind of just stand there looking over Red's body like, mm-hmm. Yeah. And eventually... So eventually these, everybody's like, oh, who are you? Right. The circus folk realize that they are all circus folk. No other... Like the uh, the audience doesn't come running. As, right. So they're all the people who are at work. Right. And so, they all know each other because yeah. they all work together. You know. Except this guy. And maybe they notice him when he hauls off and spits on Red. <laughs> and they're like who are you that man is dead show some respect right and he just he, he comes can't. unglued He's so mad. i'll tell you about respect yeah why are you hiring this you know i'll tell you who this man really is you and took so, him away from his loving right, wife and his unborn right. child and now she's broke and had to move back in with her parents and right well how do you know so much about red we just barely met him yeah mm-hmm. so right so he's guess, so mad he so, tells them so he tells them like an idiot right because he's just mad yep. and he just spit on the guy yep so guess who's the who is the most outside of everyone jeb, jeb. so the circus people are gonna rally together yep it couldn't have been one of us right it's jeb right so, even if sally jesse's kind of looking at hercules going your arm wasn't hurt and he's dead and you were mad at him right he's going like yeah but my arm was hurt because i rescued the tent and they're like whatever and yeah you're right everybody knows each other so mm-hmm. they're like yeah but we don't know this guy mm-hmm. we don't know him so the ring master um says you know we we do our own law here oh take him and string him up you know Ooh. he killed one of our guys you know and i don't know if you've ever seen the todd brown this todd browning movie freaks it's like old, old 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 and so it was about the freak show freaks and and it was like one of us one of us so like even though they were freaks they were all in it together right so he's totally an outside so it's so easy let's solve this mm-hmm. this is the easiest thing we're gonna kill him yeah captain angry milk toast who doesn't belong here he's exactly. about to get strong and up. he has the motive yep right even though so does this guy and so does this guy yep. this guy so that's one thing i know we're kind of rushing but we we don't have time to write a mystery novel so we're kind of now reaching that midpoint yeah um so one thing that you do is that usually mid story the number one suspect falls out usually right. death or something mm-hmm. now typically in a mystery um it's the killer has taken that that person out too yep. you know but bessie yeah odds are low god rest her soul yeah i like this mystery i think because the reader probably isn't ever gonna think bessie but bessie was there from yeah there. bessie has the it's in the rules right it is in the rules we yep. didn't break any rules yep. so i'm loving it i'm yeah. loving it now yeah. at first i was dubious at first i was like no way yeah this is we can't write this no, it's, it's absolutely plausible it i mean on the bottom is. of the card also it is true that is a true story like, this is this this happened we're embellishing everything but the elephant killing red right but and red. to any of red's yeah you know 
descendants. I, I apologize that we kept his name. Maybe we should have changed it to protect the... It's in the game. Blame them. That's true. Yeah. They must have... They've got paid well. Possibly. Anyways, maybe, maybe. Either way, I stand I by what I stated. It's in the game. It is. Blame it's them. It's a true story. Yeah. Okay. Um, so... So now we've outed, we've, we've, we've removed our number one suspect. All right. But Bye-bye, how Jeff. did he, he oh, got by hung. killing him. They that's hung right. Him. That's right. Okay. They yeah. They strung him up. But why do they continue then? Why is this mystery not solved? Why are they not satisfied? Well, so they are satisfied, but Sally Jesse is not. All right. Because the truth really is, is that she she was getting ready to leave her Achilles. Yeah. That's what she was going to the tent that day to tell him. Yeah. In fact, Sally Jesse is also with child. Oh. And is it reds or is it's it her Achilles or does well, she know? Well, I think it's reds. Yeah. Like maybe she hadn't been intimate with Hercules for a while and he's been kind of yeah. mad well, about it. Know, but meanwhile, Hercules, it's been hot and heavy with you red. Oh, he can get those guns up. Ah. Mm, but sometimes gotcha. when all your blood flow is going to those muscles, it's not going where it shouldn't be. So, yeah. So, uh, and maybe that's something Hercules kind of knows. Yeah. That you think that him. might make him a little more angry? <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Did they do testosterone and stuff back in? I'm not really Probably sure. not. I don't know. There, I bet there was some kind of weird some kind concoction, of like you know, oil, something or right, other some kind of testicle, would, yeah. you know, powder or something that mm-hmm. one of the fortune tellers made him. Maybe ah. he's impotent or sterile. Yeah. So either way, he knows. Yeah. So Sally Jesse was going to tell Red, I mean, tell Hercules, yep. and then was going to tell the master, the ringmaster, because she needs to maybe have a little bit less physical yeah yeah she can do the squirt people in the face with a flower but yeah. she can't get mashed into stuff right. anymore can't she get can't shot that, out of a cannon you know that giant um that giant punching fist that comes out yeah like in all the cartoons she can't take that to the gut anymore right yeah it's just not gonna happen yeah um and she can't be squished in the car with like the 12 other oh, right wait, were there cars in 19 19- not really. Not commonly. On the she back be, of a horse, perhaps. Right. Or in she a carriage. Oh, she can't be put into the middle of like a ball and rolled around. Yeah. Or something. I don't know. The point is, is that she can't because mm-hmm. she's pregnant. So she was going to tell Hercules that. So um, sh- she decides that night. She didn't buy in that, that whole arm thing, right? Mm-hmm. So later that night after this whole thing, which, you know... She's kind of feeling a little guilty about because in her mind, she's sure. He wasn't the one. It was, yeah. Right. Jeb she's wasn't guilty. Sh- she's Jeb sure. didn't do it. Hercules M- did it. Meanwhile, Ringmaster, in the back of his head, is thinking, yeah, it's Hank. It's Hank. Yeah. You know. He we, acts like a nice guy. But, but we let so Red. Zealous. I mean, I saw how Red was treating that, you know. Yeah. I saw how Red was treating Yeah, Bessie. he'd get on at Bessie's he back and poke around at her. At her yeah. Whipping at her. So... How long's Hank been hanging around, you know? Yep. And uh, I think it's Hank, you know? So he's like... So nobody's really satisfied with the fact that they killed Jeb. Right. It's like the vigilante justice did no good. Right. Around here, we make our own law, just didn't apply. Right, right. So Sally decides she's going to confront Red. I mean, uh, Hercules, Hercules, right? So she goes that night to his car tent, whatever. And now he is in a freaking rage, you know, and he's like after her and he's got his hands around her neck and he's trying to strangle her and uh, everybody comes running because she's screaming Mm -hmm. and they find him like that, you know, and he's like, I'll kill that, you know, Mm -hmm. son of a, and they're like, he's dead, you know, I want it, you know, so now everybody thinks it's him. Yep. And she's like, you hurt your arm because you you hurt him, you know. You hurt your arm and in, in yep. throwing him down and yep. dashing and, his body against the ground. Right. You hurt yourself. Yeah. Stop lying about and the he's tent. He's the father of my baby and mm-hmm. everybody's like, "What?" And now, oh, absolutely. Yeah, he absolutely is definitely the one. Him. Yeah. Meanwhile, Hank the elephant trainer is still with Bessie, you know, yep. and, and he had come running too. Mm-hmm. And so the ringmaster's kind of observing both of them right now. And Hank is like, um, you know, he's, he's really vocal at this point about 
Hercules having killed that guy. Hank so is. He, Hank, Hank All is. Right. Cause he's pissed. Hank yeah. is a good guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now he, he, maybe he was the first on the scene in the fight and he sees that mm-hmm. Hercules had his hands around Sally Jesse's neck. And so he's a he, big, strong man. Right. Like legitimately. Yeah. Hank is, or the strong man? The strong man. Well, right. But yeah. Hank, Hank, you know, he can hold his own. Yeah. He can hold his own. So I feel like he's like, you know, he's the most vocal of like, you know, you guys hung the wrong man. Yep. This guy killed. I mean, look at him. He can't control himself. He's so mm-hmm. angry. You know, he had suspicions all along and he killed him. And um, and the ringmaster's like, yeah, I think the lady doth protest too much. Like, I think you're, oh. you know. I think you did it. Right. So Sally Jesse's like, no way. It was it was Hercules. Yeah. You know, so most of them think you know they see the red on her neck every, yep. you know most of them but the but the ringmaster you know he's not sure but all right where am i gonna find another fucking strong man you know right but he's okay because this is this is justice so yep they take him and they throw him in a cage and they're gonna figure out what to do with him the next day all right so now he's locked in a cage mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so now we're down to hank basically yeah who is you know i have an idea an idea popped into my go because i i'm trying to figure out how to get to this yeah so we have to figure out how do we solve the mystery for the reader right hank still wants to take care of bessie yeah bessie still has a hurt tooth exactly so um i'm trying to decide if hank needs to die for this or not right because a proper elephant trainer would know that you don't poke at the tooth while you're on the elephant right but it would also be proper for the elephant trainer to discover the tooth and try to help. Well, that's kind of where I was trying to go yeah. with it. Like right at the last minute, right before they take out Hercules. Yeah. Hank has realized. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So he's like, oh, she has a hurt tooth. And every time I touch it, she rears up and lashes up with her trunk. Right. Now, everyone knew, including Hank, because he had been lurking. That stupid ass red loved to sit on the elephant and poke it in the mouth. Uh huh. So now Hank has figured out, hey, I, if he was poking in that sore tooth, she wouldn't have just been a little mad. Uh huh. She would have flipped out. Right. She would have reared up, lashed on him with that trunk, and threw him down, and it would have crushed him. It would have broken his ribs, and that would have killed him. Right. Um. Now, I did see strong man almost kill sally jesse right you know hercules almost did that right but he's not guilty of killing red right so there's a little inner turmoil for him because you know sally jesse's not his best buddy but also hercules is an asshole right because sally jesse i mean let's just let's just put this out there she's a hussy a little bit i mean sally jesse who hasn't she flirted with or Mm -hmm. tried to get i mean even hank knows i mean once she tried to get with him yeah hank was smart enough not to go there because hey man hercules is a big dude i don't want to right Mm -hmm. right 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 but wrath of hercules is not for me he's like yeah sally jesse but still it's not right to put hands on a woman right that is a place you don't go so i feel like hank has to go to the ringmaster and tell him what he thinks yeah might have happened but how quickly yeah, exactly. Does, does he? Does he, he let waiting till the next day when they're like, "That's it, we're gonna." Because right. he could have made this discovery at any time. It right. didn't have to be before Hercules died or after. Right. You know, so if they decide to string him up or right, whatever, throw right. him in the river with bricks on his mm-hmm. hands, whatever the uh, 1916 circus justice was at the time. Mm-hmm. Um. So, so does does Hank let Hercules die, even though he knows he wasn't guilty? So here's what I think, Hank, finally, after thinking about this all night. This yeah. is what he decides. So he goes to the ringmaster. Yep. And he says, I think he might be innocent. Yep. No, no, no. Wait a minute. I got this. So he goes to the ringmaster. He says, I'm, Bessie's got a bad tooth. It needs, it needs treated. I need someone to come and help hold her. <laughs> So I say, you know, no one's going to volunteer to do it. Right. She's going to get wild. She's an elephant. So I say we do the whole good old fashioned is he guilty or not routine with like they did with the witches. Just give so him a witch trial on the back of an elephant. Give him a witch elephant. trial. He's going to hold even not even on the back, but just kind of like hold her yeah. muzzle or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. While I try to get whatever, see what's going on with her tooth. Yeah. And if she kills him, 
he's guilty. If he survives, we let him go. All right. Circus justice. Yeah. And what? Does Bessie kill him or not? Um, I feel like Bessie should. Like she grab should. him. Or exactly what thing. she did. Grab and they the all look and they're trunk like. And ragdoll him because like, everyone will be in the room and everybody right. will see that yes. it was possible and go. Oh, that's, that's probably what, what happened, happened to Red. Red. The end. Goodness. <laughs> so we did a mystery backwards. So the story itself will unfold like. It opens with what? The scream? Sally Jesse screaming? Uh, yeah, I think so. And then she's in there. The elephant's in there agitated. Red's dead. And then Jeb comes in. And then Hank. And then everybody else. And Hercules mm-hmm. comes Jeb in holding his arm. Hercules, and, yep, trying to get help. Yep. Hank happens. Uh, all of a sudden is there in the circus where Hank has no business being. And he's got the elephant calm. Because everybody's yep. so worked up over the dead body. They don't even realize somebody has calm the elephant yeah who is it oh it's hank what are you doing here yeah 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 but you know hank is free and clear there because there's an outsider yeah and the circus life says outsider yeah. you don't belong you got a bad story he was yep. angry he spit on the dead body yeah. clearly he's guilty he's so mad so hang that asshole right get rid of him mm-hmm. and then sally just is like nah he didn't do it and then ringmaster is like yeah i don't know no, I mean, somebody so, I feel like it's one of my own that did it. Mm-hmm. What do I do? I can't yeah. afford to find another strong man, but I can't afford to let this go. You know, I can't have him killing everybody all the time. Yeah. So they put him in the cage. Right. And then Hank figures it out, but doesn't say anything. Right. And asks for a volunteer. Yeah. And yeah. Then, Hank doesn't say anything because Hank is wrestling with his own conscience about yeah, this whole situation. He, so he Hank knows. just decides to let this go yeah. and says, hey, you know what? Yeah. Because I need help. Hercules is like the textbook example of not guilty, but not innocent. Right. Like, right. Because, you know, like not to get real like mm-hmm. far reaching on like global or w- world view, but mm-hmm. like the justice system is flawed. Right. And a lot of times people will get arrested on circumstance. I mean, that's all the true crime documentaries Mm -hmm. that are well followed now are all about people who are suspicious or are in the wrong place at the wrong time, but genuinely didn't do anything regarding the crime for which they were convicted. Right. So are you innocent? Not innocent, but are you guilty? Absolutely not. Right. You know, not you guilty just, of this crime. Yeah. You know, you're suspicious. Right. You're not guilty. Right. And that's like this whole thing. Like, wow, this, it's almost allegorical. Right. And maybe even Hank doesn't even, maybe Hank thinks about that whole witch trial thing, but he doesn't say to the ringmaster. He just says, listen, he's I'm the only one not, strong enough. Like, <laughs> I need this help. So yeah. we can't kill him. I need him. Yeah. With the idea that Hank has got in the back of his head that she's going to do the she's same gonna kill him anyway. thing. Yeah. You know, and then they'll see. And then, First of all, then all suspicion is off me. Right. And I get my job back. Yeah. So. So even Hank isn't a 100% good guy. No, not that. Because he knows. Although. He's got it figured out. In Hank's defense. Yeah. He administered Hercules death. Yeah, he did. I mean, he did. He totally. Knew. He put him but, right in the spot where he knew. But he did it because of what Hercules would have inev- inevitably done to Sally Jesse. Probably. Because she's pregnant with a dead man's kid now. Yeah. And he knew, I mean, Hercules might not have known that it was Red's because, you know, she flirts around a little bit. Right. But it wasn't his. Yeah. And he knew it wasn't his because he can't put that there. Yeah. Like, that's not a thing he can do. Yeah. So, he was just a ticking time bomb. That's This is Hank's justification in his own mind. Mm-hmm. Like, someone has to rid the world of this weapon. Right. Just a, just a loaded weapon ready to go off on anyone. Yep. And it's got to be me. He's benevolent. That's in his mind. In his he's, mind. He's okay with He's it, his own he's hero. Done. Like he's right. The world's a better place now after he administered someone's death by yeah. elephant tooth. Right. Well, okay. this, you know, you were awfully. I was pessimist. I have yeah. completely pessimistic about this. Like I know I'm the one that picked it up, but I also know that we have to do other genres. Like yeah. we have to. And, and you I want great, to. Uh, I mean. Yeah. Shout out again to, to Victoria your, Thompson. To, yeah, Victoria Thompson's class and the rules that we were working yeah. with because it did make it easy. Absolutely. And I don't think that this is like if if I think Vicky would say, "Good job, Evie." I think she might because it's it's a solid mystery because 
We did all the stuff we we're supposed to. Right. And to me, these are kind of the best kind of mysteries where n- nobody's necessarily perfectly guilty. Nobody's right. necessarily perfectly innocent. Right. Like I was saying about yeah. guilt and innocence. Yeah. But at the same time, the murderer is there, also a victim herself. Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, you know, because it's not an unjustified homicide. Maybe he didn't deserve to die, but he wasn't being kind no. to her. Um, and also the the idea of the mystery is there top to bottom that's true everything's there yeah that's true we did i mean i think of everything like i'm horrible because i don't read as much as i should and i watch more tv and movies right but i'm also like a really visual thinker Mm -hmm. and i think in terms of like what i read this story i don't read a lot of mysteries Mm -hmm. but i think this is kind of fun Mm -hmm. um but i would love this as like um like a one-hour tv special even yeah i think that would be a lot of fun yeah, no, I, I... Especially because we just did a mystery based on a true story. Right? <laughs> I mean, based on a game that wasn't even meant to be a prompt. It's completely <laughs> an untrue mystery, but I mean, prove me wrong. Right? <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy. I really was pessimistic, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with so, how we ended it. So. What's the name of this game again? It, oh, it Stupid okay. Deaths? It's stupid Deaths. Yeah. Because, I mean, credit where it's due. Stupid Deaths by University Games. And right. I got mine on Amazon. So, oh, I'm so sure it's probably can. still there. Yeah. So, again, I would just like to point out that the point of a prompt is not to follow all... Like, you don't have to follow the rule of the prompt. The prompt is just a spark to get you going. And if you go and you kind of leave that prompt behind, that's okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we stuck to it. And I, yep. I honestly, I was... I was I didn't think I thought we were going to leave that prompt behind and stick with the circus and a dead elephant trainer, but we did it. And yeah. I'm, I'm really super proud of us. And thank you for, for being here and prodding me on in my sore tooth well, to keep yeah. me going. I mean, it was fun because um, it was nice. And to be boxed in a little bit, I think really helps too. Yeah. You know, that's one thing that um, you and I have both heard as advice on, you know, if you're stuck, yeah. okay, I'm stuck. What do I do? Give yourself more rules, right? Limit yourself. Yeah. Give yourself a maximum syllable count. Right. Find a perfect word somewhere yeah. else. Put it in your next sentence yeah. and make it so you yeah. can't take it out. Because next week when you're revising or editing, you might take that word out, but you have the whole story now yeah, or at exactly. least the chapter. Right. You know, just anything to motivate yourself. Give yourself mm-hmm. a, a hundred bad ideas because right. the good one will fall out. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm here for. Well, I love it. And I think you did a great job. Um, and I'm, I'm happy with our mystery. Yeah, me too. I would... Um, I would say that I was going to read it. Yeah. <laughs> Whether I would read it or not, I'm, I'm trying to get better. Like, yeah, I, I don't write mystery, but I would dabble in trying to write this one, yeah. I think. I think it would be fun, like delving in a little more mm-hmm. to each of these guys and their character traits and things I yeah. think could be really fun. Each one of these, I, I'm in, I, I really like these guys' yeah. characters. So. And, and now that we're in episode two, maybe it's time to say, oh yeah, if you're listening and you like this story and you want to flesh it out or you want to change something or you heard the prompt and we went a completely different direction, Mm -hmm. write your story. Write your story and send it to us because our hope, this is kind of our, I wouldn't call it a pie in the sky dream because I think it's really realistic. we're going to do this just when it's, when it's really dependent on you guys. And it takes a lot of participation right here in season one. Right. And you know, nobody, we've got, I think we're almost to 550 Twitter followers today as we record. So it's going to take a lot of passionate involvement from you. But we want to be anthologists for brain squalls. And we want your stories to be in the anthology. Ultimately, we might write one to be included. Which you can vote on. Yeah. That's that you need to. Like what your favorite episode was. You vote. I'll write that story. That will go in the anthology, but every other story in that anthology is is from you, yeah, um, who wrote stories to on our prompts and what you got out of our podcast. Because I really want it to be. That's exactly what we want to do, right? Mm-hmm. We want to absolutely spark and, creativity. So, and, and Evie, being a professional writer, we know what it means to take the time to write, to revise, oh yeah, to share to workshop yeah uh it's a paying anthology oh absolutely we, this is yeah, not something where we want you to submit for free no way this will be if a we, real credit it'll be a real professional work the, yeah absolutely it will be and you will have a credit on your on your writing resume oh also i would like to add and i i hope you agree with me because this one just came right off the top of my head and we haven't discussed it at all but if you're an artist and something that 
this story like inspires you absolutely oh my god please because we will we'll need cover art and i would be happy to put some some picture pages like picture, i think it'd be great yeah picture slide things in, yeah like into a, the almost anthology like a mini well. cover for each story in the anthology absolutely for sure so if you're inspired as an artist or mm-hmm. whatever if you're inspired as a cake decorator you can send us the cake that works too that <laughs> you know that is a, a brilliant we also hadn't discussed that but right. i really love where your head's going with no, that right like anything no but seriously yeah if you're inspired whatever your art mo- you know comic book artist whatever send us because oh my gosh it can go up on the website if nothing else Mm -hmm. because i totally want a picture of your cake that you decorated with bessie on it yeah absolutely you know or like um you know just a quick line art one sheet about the story right if nothing else if absolutely nothing else i don't know how much traffic we'll get we're hoping that we get big and popular if nothing else we will put you on our website we will tweet it out and thank you for it i will always put it on our instagram um Mm -hmm. sharing credit that's one of the things we talked about in episode one is that the writing community is positive and uplifting mm-hmm. and sharing and that's something that we yeah. really want to do we yeah. really want to make sure that everybody sees each other's talent as much yeah. as possible we'll give you a squalor holler yeah <laughs> in case you didn't know because we haven't told you until just now that's what we're going to call our, our our close group yeah uh, our, if, our if we get fan. to the point of uh you know using patreon which we hope to we will, you're going to be affectionately called our squallers and when you join we'll give you the squalor holler yeah um but yeah, that's something that we're hoping to uh, get involved in as well. Yeah. The anthology, I think, is going to be a lot of fun. Think it's going to so. be a lot of work, but we can mm-hmm. do it. Yeah. Uh, Evie's a good story editor. I'm a good copy editor. So mm-hmm. between the two of us, we can do that. And I'm pretty sure we'll be able to find a publisher that'll want to work with us as long as our material is good. Yeah. And that's up to you. Right. You make us good material and uh, we'll get you printed. Yeah. And Meanwhile. who would not want an anthology with their own story? In? Right. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, or art, or their own artwork. Right. Meanwhile, yeah. Meanwhile, I was going to say, meanwhile, we'll just keep trying to. Yeah. What? I'm going to do your line. Oh, yeah. Just keep trying to inspire. Say uh, something along the lines of hoping to spark some uh, bright ideas for them. Right. Yeah. And then we'll see you all when the next storm blows in.